HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as MapFree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. Happy Holidays and welcome to this best of edition of HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to recap some of the happenings this year in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we will show you scenes from happenings in town throughout the year. We start off with the founder of the Hopkinton Independent, Sarah Duckett, being awarded for all of her hard work throughout the years from the Chamber of Commerce. A number of community members were at Faith Community Church Thursday morning as the Hopkinton Chamber of Commerce presented founder of the Hopkinton Independent newspaper, Sarah Duckett, with their annual Distinguished Service Award. You know, it's hard to put in perspective what Sarah Duckett's meant to the community because uh, if you think about the kind of impact that the Hopkinton Independent has uh, on the politics and sort of community affairs, uh, it's a pretty daunting, uh, it's a pretty daunting challenge to try to do that. You know, she she's been immersed in the community. She's proven herself as a volunteer over the years. Appropriations committee, very much involved in the library, and then starts the independent, which has made a, a major contribution to the town. That's why she deserves the recognition she received this morning. So pretty much every way that it would be possible to touch a town and have an influence in a town. Sarah has found a way to do, and it's kind of been drawn, I think, to do that just because how much you care about the town. Many community leaders were happy to recall memories and recognize Sarah for all the hard work she has done to keep Hopkinton residents informed with what is happening in their town. Most people appreciate the impact of a local news, of what the local newspaper has on a local economy. The fact that she sold rather than closed the newspaper was her way of keeping Hopkinton great. Sorry about that. For one, a local newspaper affects the cost of borrowing for the town's projects. The Independent affords local citizens the opportunity to scrutinize and interrogate the quality of projects and policies before approval. Lenders and creditors appreciate that. If she had closed the publication, the vacuum created would most likely be filled by national papers whose desire is to chase the national and global sexy stuff and might not give a damn about local projects. And so, yes, as others have previously said, the entire Hopkinton owes her and her family a debt of gratitude. Chamber of Commerce Chair Scott Richardson was also in attendance and happy to be part of recognizing Sarah as one of his last Chamber of Commerce duties. Well, again, it was kind of like an, a long overdue recognition of Sarah and her contribution to the town uh, over the past, what is it, 40 plus years. Um, certainly focusing on really the creation of the Hopkinton Independent as a really critical part of this community and having it continue after she leaves is a testament to you know kind of her vision and commitment to further communicating what's important to the town. And uh, also, I guess this was your last presentation as president of the Chamber of Commerce. Could you just talk about uh, what it was like to uh, be the president of the Chamber of Commerce and work with that group all these years? Sure. Well, again, uh, we, have a, we have a great group. And over the past six years or so, uh, certainly every year I'd say, well, who wants to be president? And nobody kind of stepped up, which was okay because we had, we have a lot of new members, a lot of great committee chairs, and they're really doing the bulk of the work. So, but obviously after that time frame, it's time to get some new, new people, uh, you know, up, coming up the ladder and, uh, Sir Christina agreed, uh, to be, uh, to be president. I think she'll do, I know she'll do a wonderful job. So it was time. Despite the very deserved accolades, recognition, and awards, Sarah stated she wasn't looking for any of that. It's a little overwhelming. It really is. I, uh, 
I don't do things for recognition. I just do things that need to be done. So it's, uh, it was fun, but I would have preferred not to have it happen. <laughs> After running the Hopkinton Independent for nearly 20 years, the memories will live on for Sarah. Memories are what I have now. <laughs> but um, I can't believe where all those years went. It's just so, so fast. You know, it's, the older you get, the faster they go. I strived to find an exit plan when I knew it was time to retire. I wanted the paper to continue. With a sale to Suzanne Farber and Dave Bagnon of the Community Advocate, I believe I have found that commitment to community and continuity. And I can't get away without recognizing the enormous support of my family. From the beginning, they built the desk arrangement, taught me how to use the computer. That was a big one. <laughs> I had never even used a keyboard before. Uh, they were available whenever I had a problem, went with me when I dropped off the paper in Worcester, and learned how the print process worked and kept me updated on what was going on in the schools. God bless them all, three kids and a very supportive husband. Once again, this past April, some of the elite Kenyan runners were at Elmwood School to meet and greet with the students and to celebrate the Boston Marathon. Here's a look. John Hancock once again brought some elite Kenyan runners to visit Elmwood with the Scholars and Stars program. As always, the students had a great time and enjoyed meeting some of the elite Kenyan athletes. <laughs> and you can just walk around. So you put water in it. So for guiding. And then this is for here's now for people who are leaders. Leaders. Like if you if you're chosen in your community to be a leader, they give you something like this. And then you go around, you talk with it. So there was a president, Moi. Yeah, Moi. Moi used, yeah, he was more president of Kenya. He used to talk to this. Did you have a good time? Yeah. How do you like meeting all the runners? Awesome, kind of. Do you have a favorite runner? Uh, Joffrey. How come? Because he won the Boston Marathon and we made a poster. Mr. Keene's class, as always, showed off some of their wonderful studies of the Kenyan culture prior to the ceremony. How are you enjoying Elmwood today? Are you having a good time? Yes, it's fun. You know? uh, how do you like uh, meeting all the students and seeing all they did about uh, Kenya, all the hard work? And... It's great. They're excited and uh, they're, they're asking us a lot of questions about you know all the stuff that we have here, like what's the meaning of it. They want to know much about it, so it's really exciting to be here with them. Is this your first time here? It's my first time. She won it before. Excellent. Uh, are you uh, ready for the marathon on Monday? Yep. Get excited. Excellent. And um, hopefully the weather will be uh, better than last year. Yeah, that's what we are hoping. So we will see what happens. But no matter what, we have to race anyway. So we are excited for anything that comes on Monday. Yeah. You enjoy to see the streets? I enjoy it. How do you like the hard work? Uh, I've seen everything that we have in Kenya. Uh, you are uh, you, you have it in uh, USA, and I'm happy to, to meet to think such thing like this in this country because it is our culture. To have it in Kenya. Some students also got a chance to run a couple laps with the athletes around the bus loop. Yeah, and I was like, he like, 
No, it's uh, very motivating. The amount of work and uh, time they put into it is very encouraging to know that people are study about us, study about where we come from. So that when you come here and run, we're just not any other skinny Kenyan running. But we, they personalize us and learn so much about us. And we, it's very surprising to know how much they know about each and every one of the athletes here today. Elmwood students made a donation to the Kenyan Children's Foundation It's just amazing uh, to know that these kids come together, they sacrifice their, their money, their little money they get from their parents to be able to help other kids back in Kenya who cannot get what they have and they help them to get it. So this donation goes a long way. This gives a chance to kids to go to school in Kenya and be able to study and get the education that these kids are getting. I'm so excited and I'm so thankful to all those that have given to us this course. Have a good time today, yes. Elmwood? Yes, <laughs> good time today. How would you like seeing the kids and all the artwork they did and all the studying about the Kenyan culture? Yeah, it's great. How do you say thank you again? Terrific. Yes. Was this your uh, first time here, Kenneth? Yeah, first time here. Excellent, you're going to be back? Yeah, I'm back. I'll be back soon. Maybe next time we'll be back again in Boston. I like it so much. It's a nice place. Very nice environment. Yeah. All right, terrific. We wish you the best of luck on Monday, Thank you. Guys. Thank you. See you. You can view the entire Kenyan Day ceremony on our website, hcam.tv. This past May, Elmwood hosted their annual International Night event. Here's a look. Elmwood School hosted their annual International Night event. The evening included various dance and musical performances and different types of food from around the world for sampling. HCAM's Mike Terosian was on the scene for the festivities. celebrating the second annual Elmwood for Diversity Night. So it's an international celebration where families come to Elmwood. They bring, if you look behind me, you see tables where families bring food, traditional food from their culture, um, share food with neighbors and friends. Um, and then we have a, a, a huge variety of entertainers, students, parents, t a teacher's husband and sister-in-law. Um, showcased some international talent. Tonight's going great. We've had lots and lots of families. We set the gym up a little bit differently this year with lots of seats so folks can sit and enjoy what we're calling the show. There's a really sweet backdrop behind us uh, where kids could stand behind as they were getting ready to come out and do their um, showcase their talent. And as you can see and hear, lots of kids are here having lots of fun with their classmates, teachers, and neighbors and friends. So it's a really fun night of fellowship for everybody. It's all about promoting diversity in our school here at Elmwood and all the different cultures that everyone brings to the table. And what's tonight all about? What are they doing tonight? Everybody is celebrating their culture and sharing the different talents that they have and the different things that they've grown up with in their families. In my classroom, I love to celebrate diversity by bringing the different things that my kids have learned 
at home and with their families into the room. Um, we celebrated each morning by having them share the different things from their families. I knew that uh, the Enwood student community is a diverse uh, community and I've always wanted to appreciate the different cultures and uh, as the diversity in a student among our student population grew I wanted to kind of bring that to the forefront and enjoy the different talents and uh, cultures that students bring to our classroom every day. Uh, this was a team effort it took us about um, about four weeks of uh, working and uh, planning about three to four months before this day so a lot of effort went to it and since we did this last year people uh, kind of knew what their roles were and we were fortunate enough to get new members who were just as enthusiastic as our uh, previous members and the members who are still there so our council has actually grown in numbers how do people become members what, what do they do they just uh, uh, they just show up for meetings and we welcome uh, different voices, we welcome people to express their thoughts and feedback and uh, you just show up for a meeting and it's um, no one is directing the meeting. If you want to say something, it's a free platform for you to say something. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of healthcare options. Every August, the Hopkinton Police Department partakes in National Night Out. Here's a look at this year's festivities. The annual Hopkinton Police Department National Night Out event took place at the Hopkinton Town Common. Well, we're uh, still right in the middle of it, but I, I think this is probably the um, uh, most attended event we've had over the years. And it's really starting to catch on, and we're really bringing the police and the community together to work on solving problems. And the whole essence of this is crime prevention, and we're doing our best to educate the public and just work with the public and let them know. All right, that kid's going to get arrested. <laughs> just kidding. But, um, no. Seriously, it's all about you know communication and, and letting the uh, public know that what we do on a daily basis. And we've always had a great partnership with the, the citizens and uh, you couldn't ask for a better community when it comes to the police and the community working together. Can you talk about some of the different officers you have here today? Oh, well, we have uh, most of our, pretty much have our whole department here, but uh, this is a big year because this is the first year that we're going to do a uh, demonstration with our newest K-9 Titan. And I know a lot of people are looking forward to that. And today's my birthday and... Um, oh, happy birthday. Well, thank you. And I guess there might be a surprise for me on my birthday. I, I think I might have to take a bite on the sleeve. <laughs> I'm not too excited about it. Uh -oh. <laughs> Those in attendance also got a first-hand look at the Hopkinton K-9 unit in action. Sure, so I work um, obviously here at Hopkinton Police Department. Um, hi there, hello buddy. Um, 
My dog is a one and a half ish year old German Shepherd, and we just recently got out of um, Police Academy for patrol through Boston Police Canine Academy. Um, he was one of my classmates too. So uh, during that 14 week period, we got certified in um, tracking, um, criminal apprehension, building searches, area searches, evidence searches, um, agility, obedience. obedience. Am I missing anything else? No. So we got done with that class in January, and then um, we both went right back into secondary school, detection school, um, where my dog got certified in explosive detection. Um, again, that was through Boston Police Canine Academy, and that was a 10-week course. And um, Mike's dog got certified in narcotics, six weeks course through uh, Plymouth County. Okay, very nice. Um, so what are you showing the kids here uh, today? Um, basically, everything that we just explained to you we're going to do um, some brief demonstrations on what the dogs are capable of doing um, we're going to run through um, basically what i just told you what we're capable of um, bring out some equipment explain what each one of those is used for in our training and then i will bring the dogs out and show you some exercises so what i'm going to have my dog do is going to be called an evidence search so in my pocket here i have a knife i'm going to throw it i'm going to throw it up into the grass Quiet. i'm going to throw it out to the grass he's not going to be able to see it He's just gonna look. He's gonna search with his nose, and he's gonna let me know when he found it by laying down on it. That will just about do it for this best of edition of HCAM News. Don't forget you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website hcam.tv as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton community calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton related video, photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, everyone, and we wish you very happy holidays and a happy new year.
On Thursday, December 12th, Hopkinton Hillers Boys Varsity Hockey took on Medfield in their season opener. It was all defense in the first period and it was scoreless after the first 15 minutes. In the second period, the scoring was fast and furious. Sean Walsh pulled off some smooth moves just shy of 90 seconds into the period. He's turned up into the neutral zone off the stick of Lawson. Sean Walsh catches up with it. Walsh coming up the ice quickly. A great move there, back in her goal! Sean Walsh makes it one to nothing, Hillers! Wow, what a move! Well, he knew they weren't gonna be able to hold his speed in check for too long. He's usually very good in the power play, taking it end to end, and definitely showed off the skills there. Medfield struck back a little less than three minutes later. On the near side now, Sheamus. Warriors take over, here's a breakaway, backhander, turn away, wide open net and it's in. Sam Palmer evens this game at one. The game wasn't tied for long at all after freshman Pavit Mera had an opportunity. Both teams have a man in the box, four on four. Here comes Mera, back in her end! Hello, Pavit Mera, the freshman makes it two to one. Oh, what a spectacular way to score your first goal. That was a really nice move on the backhand. It's always tough for a goalie to pick that up. You're not quite sure where it's gonna go when it leaves it stick. Medfield retied the game a little less than two minutes later. And there by Cam Gota. Medfield with the man advantage for the next 40 seconds or so. Here comes Parker, and that's it! Two to two, what a shot! The goal made it a two to two game with 8.36 left in the second. That's how the score stayed until the third with 10.24 left. Sheamus working it up the ice. And he'll meet up with two Warriors in the corner. Out in front, Quinlan, and in! Will, Will Quinlan was just waiting for it. Mirror got down there, he was able to fight in that corner, get that puck out, put it right on the stick. Will Quinlan with the go-ahead goal to make it a 3-2 game, and that is all the Hillers needed as they came away with a win in game number one of the season against a very good Bedfield team on the road at Pirelli Veterans Arena. The Hillers start the season off with two points. Hillers boys basketball hosted Dedham in their season.